Welcome to another edition of Deeper Dive. I'm that co-host, or should I say host, Jay Wall. This is season five, episode 26. And our wonderful co-host, Dawn, is not with us today. So we ask you to keep her and her family in your prayers. And to the folks out in podcast land, we want to thank you for taking the time out uh, to listen to us. We really do appreciate that. Uh, any sermon related questions you may have, please text us at 954-388-8780. And you can always find us at plantationsda.tv. And today, as in no any other day, we have our fashionable shepherd, but let me give him an AKA. He has another AKA. So <laughs> I'm going to give him today, AKA <laughs> Pastor Plaid with white sneakers. Wow, wow. It's so good. So that's a new one. Joe. Welcome, Pastor Rose. Always welcome. So as uh, Cassandra said, that you are fashionable all the time. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you for that. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. All right. As we always do, let's start off with a word of prayer. We will proceed. Yes. Father God, once again, thank you all for what you've done for us, Lord. Your grace and mercy is always sufficient. Well, we thank you for this podcast. We thank you for the message that was preached, Lord. May it go through all, to everyone, everywhere, to enrich your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 So, Pastor, here we got this sermon, Living Stones. How'd you come up with that sermon title? Yeah, so we've been trying now, Joe, for the past few months or so to encourage people, any person, as a matter of fact, who steps on our campus, any person mm -hmm. who steps through our doors at the church, to encourage them to find meaningful connections, right? Connections that go beyond what I refer to as the the superficial happy Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we 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 have we have designated the first Sabbath of every month as Connection Sabbath, the Sabbath when we'll seek to encourage that. We seek to lift up the importance of life groups, people connecting in life groups or small groups, as some people may call them. And so I wanted I wanted to share a message that would feed into that theme of connection. Yes. And I thought about, I thought about, the thought came to me, must have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. I thought about stones connecting and 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 how stones connect to build up a building. Mm -hmm. And so I was led to, I was reminded of first Peter uh, chapter two, four to ten, where Peter mm -hmm. talks about about the believers being living stones. But then I was reminded that Paul also shares a similar message. Yes. In in in, in his letter to the church at 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 uh at Ephesus. Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 22. Mm -hmm. And so here I am looking at these two passages and thinking, okay, which one do I share? Right. And the Holy Spirit says, well, share both. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just made my my job more interesting, <laughs> but I know you'll be there to help me, you know, see it through and and put the thing thing together. And so, as I looked at both these passages, mm -hmm. I thought it would be so fitting for Connection Sabbath, feeding into this theme of folks finding true connection in the body of Christ. And so that's where the 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 the, the topic came from. And that's how I end up looking at these two passages, as I said on Sabbath, as two trains on parallel tracks yes. heading in the same direction. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Sort of. So just a little little further. Um, so in, F in Ephesians, yes. we have the Gentiles uh, being rejected or not feeling they're not chosen. Um, yes. Of course, you have the Israel was thinking that the only dwelling place was the temple. Yes. But you stand here now, Jesus being the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. You know, since the curtain was torn in two, mm -hmm. now the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Let's go, let's go, let's go to Peter. Um, you talked about the living stone, the spiritual house, the chosen generation. Talk about that a little bit more. So this 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 is such an important theme because what we find God conveying here mm -hmm. is that. He is more interested in holy people than holy buildings. Of course. Now, for Israel, the presence of God was evident 
and was representative in in the temple. Yes, this yes. This was a concrete fixed structure. And mm -hmm. by the way, when you reflect on his prayer, that is Solomon's prayer at the ded dedication of the temple, one of the things among others he says in his prayer was God, this this building is not adequate to contain. As a matter of fact, the entire world is not big enough to contain to contain you. Of course. And so God here in these passages through Peter and Paul mm -hmm. is is showing that he is interested. What Jesus came to do was to build up the kingdom, not a permanent structure on earth, not a building, but people. People. Yes. Yes. And so each each stone in that building, in that kingdom, this holy temple in the Lord, as Paul puts it in, in Ephesians 2.21, each person called by God, whether Jew or, or Gentile, they are they are part of the building. But in in this in, in this in this specific case, both with Peter and 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 Paul, their audience, Joe. Mm -hmm. their audience were Gentiles. They're dealing yes. with a Gentile yes. audience. And for the Gentiles, here was the social construct for them. Mm -hmm. So the Gentiles, they, the audience to which they were speaking, they were not considered uh, special because they were not Jews. They're not they coming not chosen from generation, the yeah. lineage of Abraham. Yes, they don't mm -hmm. have Abraham yeah. as father. Yeah, mm-hmm. Then the 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 Romans, the Romans, who were the imperial power at the time, yes. they weren't part of the imperial power of Rome, the, mm. the audience to which Peter and Paul is speaking. And so in that social construct, they're really nobodies. They're wow. really nobodies. Wow. And and Paul and, and Peter, they 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 they, they demonstrate that. In 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 both passages, and how it is that because of Christ, and that's one of the reasons I emphasize that how because of Christ, mm -hmm. they now are a part and they are important. But back to your 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 question, it's the emphasis is about how every person called by God mm -hmm. now becomes a part of the building up of the temple of God. This this holy temple. Which is not a physical building, yes. right? But something that is is spiritual in nature, and that every person can be a part of, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your lineage. Yes, I remember because you were Peter was talking about the chosen generation being a royal priesthood. Yes, and then Paul's talking about you're no longer foreigners, no longer but you're foreigners. citizens of God because you're yes. past time of flight. Talk about privileges have their citizens have their privileges, huh? Yes. I, I like how you mentioned true. that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, let's talk about the metaphors you mentioned. Uh you talked about uh the church, of course, being the mm -hmm. vineyard. Yes. Uh and Christ being the divine, divine dresser. Yes. Um the sheep we're the sheep and he's sheep. the shepherd. Shepherd, yes. And then we're the bride and he's yes. the bridegroom. Yes. And then the one I like most of all is the body. But God, Jesus is the head, by the head body. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. I like that metaphor you mentioned. Well, I, I, the reason the the reason I shared those examples was to lift up the fact that in those examples, what we find are mm -hmm. metaphors that represent living things. Mm -hmm. So, a vine is a living thing, right? Mm -hmm. A vine dresser is a living person. A sheep yeah. is a living thing. A shepherd is a living person. Mm -hmm. A bride and groom are living persons. Yes. A body, a living body, living head, head. And so I wanted, I wanted to contrast that, Joe, with this, this metaphor, this quote unquote new metaphor used by Paul and Peter of stones of a building. Mm -hmm which by nature are inanimate, right? Yes, yes. Uh, stones are inanimate. Buildings are inanimate. And so I wanted to show how 
in most instances, when the Bible uses a metaphor to illustrate the relationship between Christ and his church, between God and his people, the Bible uses living metaphors. Right? Yes. But here in this instance, God is employing, because we believe the Holy Spirit inspired them to, inspired both Paul and Peter to, God is employing, the Holy Spirit is employing metaphors or using an, an object or elements that are by nature, that are by nature inanimate. Yes. Hence, I mentioned the qualifier, right? Peter mm -hmm. says living stones. Yes. He didn't just say stones. He says mm -hmm. living, living stones. Stone. Yes. And, and Paul talks about a building that grows, right? Mm -hmm. We we usually don't 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 understand stones as being alive. Yes. We we usually don't understand buildings growing. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. But, but 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 we find this being used. And I was I was sharing, I was sharing the reason I believe this was done was to was to lift up the fact that outside of Christ we are by nature dead we are we, we are. are inanimate mm -hmm. but when we come to him paul talks about in ephesians 2 he, he begins by saying that 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 god through jesus has quickened us mm -hmm. in other words he has brought us back to life those of us who were dead all of us rather who were yeah. dead in trespasses and sins mm -hmm. god through jesus has quickened us or has brought us back to life. And so I was saying, as stones, we were dead, mm -hmm. inanimate. But as living stones, because of Jesus Christ, we are now animate. We are now living. And I I shared that example where Jesus entering into Jerusalem that last yeah. week. You know, yeah, I was about to question that. Go ahead. Folks, yes, and the folks mm -hmm. were saying, Hosanna in the highest, the religious leaders, perhaps out of fear, fear or how Rome would, would take it, or out of professional jealousy, said to him, hey, you better tell these folks to shut up. And <laughs> Jesus said, hey, listen, if I tell them to shut up and they and they shut up, the stones will cry out. Yeah, that's it's an, 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 interesting <laughs> how God can allow something that is inanimate to mm -hmm. come to life and praise him. Yes. And for that, uh, you talked about the call. Let's talk about that a little bit. You said the call. We the living stones, uh, the spiritual house for the holy temple of the Lord, of course, to advance his kingdom. Why did you mention that? The call. So Peter, Peter talks about you are, but you are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. And the concept of being called is is what the church is about. The word church as we use it today, ecclesia, really means the called out ones. Oh, the those out. whom God has called out of darkness, as Peter puts it, into mm -hmm. his his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. And remember, as I mentioned, the social construct, these were folks who were nobodies. Yes. They had no rank, they had no status. You're out because of yes, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, mm -hmm. they are now royalty. They are now special. Yes. So it is with every believer, with every believer mm -hmm. who who responds to the call, their status by virtue of their response, Joe. And this is what's amazing. Mm -hmm. By virtue of their response, their status, their status changes yes yeah 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 their status changes but 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 this is important they are elected because they accepted yes they are elected because they're they're accepted in other words they have this special status now because they responded to the call mm -hmm. they responded to the call and so it is with you and i when when I respond to the call, when you respond to the call, Joe, this status is ours. That's what the Bible says. 
Yes. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy it's a, it's nation. Heir. We're heir. We're peculiar people, God's special people. Mm -hmm. Because we've responded to the call. But 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 we should never lose sight that it is God who has called us out of darkness. Amen. It is God who has given us this new status. Therefore, I must never take credit for my new status. Of course. I should never think that my new status makes me somehow better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. But appreciate fully that it's because of Jesus. And that's one of the reasons, though, by the way, I brought up the fact that both Peter and Paul reminded the believers of their former status. Yes. And indeed. Paul is very graphic, very graphic, rather, in, in in Ephesians chapter two, because he talks about, man, you guys were a mess. You were you were strangers, you were aliens, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you were by nature evil and, and 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 wicked people. Yes. But because of God's mercy and God's love, Amen. now here you are, here you are. And so it is with 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 a lot of us. And I thank God, I thank God for the call upon our lives, Joe. Amen for that. Because Pastor. man, I can tell you, some of us were a mess before Jesus. We were a mess. Yeah, that's true. We, that is true. The only royalty we were, Joe, we were we were royal messes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the only royalty we had <laughs> we were royal messes, <laughs> right? But but Jesus, because of Jesus, the call in our lives. And it's a powerful thing that you and I can can experience. And it's I see it as a miracle, Joe, that we mm. can experience someone being transformed. Right there. Someone, someone's character being transformed in front of our very eyes. That's and it. so it, it, the, the, the call is about God coming to us through Jesus Christ and saying, Hey, I I have something better for you. Yes. I have a better purpose for your life. And when we when we respond to that by virtue of our response, Peter says it, we become a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We become his own special people to now do what? To go out and proclaim his praises by yes. pointing others to the fact that, hey, this is what God did for me, changed my life around, and he can do the same for you. You know, I was um, telling my wife this morning, and uh, we were having Sabbath, um, our worship this morning, and I told her, I said, um, I forgot what the lesson was on today. Was it more Sabbath something? I totally forgot what the title was. Mm -hmm. um, it was a part where Jesus, of course, he went to uh, pray, and how he was at, I think, Simon's house, and his mother, Simon's his wife's mother, was healed. Yes. But yes. then there was a point where Jesus, because of the fact that he stayed connected to his father, that he was able to heal people right mm -hmm. then and there fully. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I was telling my wife, I said, it's not funny that we're trying to be ministers, but yet and still we haven't been healed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we need to be healed first before we become ministers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was telling my wife that, you know, how we turn things around. And that made me think about, you know, you made a point about, we're being in the faith for so long, the case mm -hmm. may be where we are, we're grown. Mm -hmm. But why do we seem to lose sight of the Great Commission? Why do we feel that we this is just enough? And 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 I think I think it may be a number of things, though. Sometimes it's our our misunderstanding as to what the 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 call entails, because the call is never God never just calls me for me. Mm -hmm. That's important. Just as how God never just blesses me for me. God blesses me, yes, because he wants to use me to bless others. Yes. God has called me because he wants to use me to call others. Because how did God call me? God called me through other people. Mm. God never sent, well, I'm sure I can speak on your behalf too, Joe, but mm -hmm. God never sent some angel from heaven to call me. Right? <laughs> and I'm sure that, that you can yeah. say the same thing too. Yeah, I, I can agree God that, sent yeah. another human being. Amen. Another person who was acting in concert with their call and their purpose. Because notice Peter says 
that he called you out of darkness into his yeah. marvelous light so that you can show the praises of him, Peter says. You can show the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And how do we show the praise of God? It's not just about attending the worship service yes. and getting our praise on. And it's not just about living lives that, that, that glorify God, but part of living those lives and part of living out the gospel is sharing the gospel. Yes. And so yes. we we have been called to call others. You know, Pastor, and, that's... And once you sense, once mm -hmm. you sense that, you can't help. Two things, I believe, Joe. Once you remember what it is that God has rescued you from, mm -hmm. you can't help but share with others. That's true. That's true. And uh... that's the other piece as to why I believe Paul and Peter reference the believers toward to, back towards their back to rather their their former lives mm -hmm. because he wanted them to remain they both peter and paul rather wanted them to remain sensitive to others who are still in darkness amen so amen. when i when i when i'm grateful for what god has done and what god has brought me through where god has brought me from i remain sensitive towards those who are still where I am coming from, where I came from. Yes. And, and, and I'm willing now to be used by God to point those people to him. Amen. I can definitely say that was makes your testimony that much more sweeter to who it does. It certainly does, Joe. It certainly yeah, does. It does. It makes it, that's the point I was trying to make today about God, how he changes you and you end up, you end up, in an instant ministry you do you, you do because and then you because, share because because part of what happens because notice the language peter and paul uses the language of of being fitted together amen being fitted together and to me what is being emphasized there is that every person who is called every believer god ensures that there is a fit he fits that person into this holy temple that he's growing, which hmm. is his kingdom on earth, which is the advancement of his cause, which is the sharing of the gospel. So you and I, Joe, coming mm -hmm. from different experiences, life experiences, different backgrounds, different situations, when we when when we respond to the call and we come into this this fellowship, yes, God ensures, that there's a fit for you, Joe, and there's a fit for me. Mm. Mm. And you... part of our responsibility, yeah, I believe, as leaders in the church, is to ensure that we are cooperating with the Holy Spirit to ensure that people find their fit in God. They Amen find their that. fit in His purpose. Thank you for saying that, Pastor, because I was thinking about, I remember you mentioned God uh, decides where the believer fits and where he or she Yes, God well, decides if, if, a, if they fit and where they fit. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. important. God decides if the believer fits, and 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 the believer fits because of Jesus Christ, and He decides where the believer fits, and we should not allow our process mm -hmm. frustrate the process. And let me explain that. So, we may have a process of a church board or a process of a committee or pulling straws, whatever that process may be. But we should never allow that process to interfere with what God is seeking to do. Mm. Because God has a way of overriding our process and vetoing our process mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. his will be done. And what, what am I saying in real terms? And so when a brother or a sister responds to the call of Christ, comes into the community of faith, We've got to ensure that that brother finds his fit in Jesus. That sister finds her fit in Jesus. Yes. And whatever process we have, that process must seek to accommodate that and not say, well, we don't know if you fit here. Well, you know, you got to spend some time. You're like this Johnny come lately and you got to pay <laughs> your dues. And yeah, yeah. You know, I think we've got enough of those already. No, <laughs> we've got to ensure that our process helps the process that 
God is seeking to play out in the church. And that's ensure that every believer, every person who's called, they find their discover their fit in the cause yes. of Christ. You know, I uh, just thought about something. Good thing he said living stones and not living bricks. Wow. <laughs> yes, he chisels and cuts <laughs> and he makes the fit. Yeah, because yeah. if a brick is And not it's important for us, fit. Joe, not to mm -hmm. miss out that key element of Christ being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. Because he's the one now that 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 keeps the thing together. Yeah. The cornerstone upholds the building. Yeah. So you and I, as part of the building in different stones, we must never ever believe that it it rests, it relies on us. Yeah. That you know what? If I don't show up, if I decide to leave, if I decide mm -hmm. to quit, then the church can't go on. Not true. <laughs> Not true. God yeah. will find someone else who fits. That's true. I I, I I'm that's glad. what he's about. I'm glad you mentioned that because I thought about bricks. I said, well, I know bricks, if they're a certain size and if they're not, uh, if they're not useful, they, they get tossed. Yes. And, and cause you know, you have to have a builder's plan with the yes. building material with a building plan. But I yes. thought about stones. Yeah. Stones are valuable. Stones yes. are unique. Yeah. And they fit where they need to fit. That, that, oh, and, I, it and, all comes and, together. And sometimes the, st the stone, the stone layer, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. he cuts it. Mm -hmm. find the fit right right he's got to chisel it chisel it away or he's got to smooth it down mm -hmm. and i do believe joe that for some of us sometimes god allows the challenges and the trials and the testings to uh, chisel our our character and to smooth us down so that we can fit we he can fit us nice. for his cause and for his kingdom nice pastor i like that i like that Last thing. So, what's up with this blue shirt? You didn't. What happened with the <laughs> story? Talk to me about that shirt, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, so I shared a story that happened when I was about eight or nine. When mm -hmm. I was about eight or nine, and I was living, I was living in Jamaica in one of these we call them tenements, tenement yards. Yeah. Where you had a shared bathroom and kitchen, and different houses, if you could call them that, and in the yard. Mm -hmm. And so my aunt, one of my mother's sisters, she was living in the UK at the time. She came on a visit and she brought this real nice blue shirt. And every time I, th I talk about it, Joe, I can see it in my mind's eye. It was just the prettiest shirt I've ever seen to, to that point. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned how my mother was, was one of those mothers, it wasn't unique to her was part of the culture for some folks my mother was one of those mothers joe who who believed that you should never wear something brand new out of the package right away mm -hmm. that you should you know put put it aside for a while as a matter of fact let me just share here joe before sure. i continue <laughs> well I'll get, I'll get back to that in the end so but, she, she, no she put the shirt shirt away joe i love the shirt so yeah. between between her stashing the shirt, as I put it, and her deciding that it was now convenient for me to wear the shirt, I had experienced a growth spurt. Okay. <laughs> and so by the time I got to 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 trying to fit the shirt on, I was discovering that the shirt was pretty tight, but I started to <laughs> suck in as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Say, yeah, mom, it's it's fitting, it's fitting. And she said, no, 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 it's too tight for you. It's too tight for you. And so I was so disappointed, Joe, so disappointed. <laughs> but then my mother, being the Christian person she was, she found a boy in the yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and she decided to give the boy this shirt because she found a boy for whom the shirt could fit. Mm -hmm. And she gave the shirt to the boy. And Joe, I was so angry. I can imagine. Every time that boy wore that shirt, Joe, <laughs> I was so upset and I would be grumbling, that's my shirt. That's my shirt. <laughs> you know? Oh, but, my but, goodness. You know, my, my, mother, my mother, of course, being a, a Christian lady, thought that, you know, someone else could use a shirt. Obviously, 
the shirt was not my fit anymore. Mm -hmm. The shirt was not my fit anymore. And, and, and I share this with you that I promised to share. I think that has impacted me in this way, Joe. My wife will tell you that I never purchase a shirt unless I'm going to wear it like in two days. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I agree. <laughs> if, if I purchase a shirt today, mm -hmm. please know that by Friday I'm wearing that shirt. Gotcha. <laughs> like I'm I not gotcha. putting it up. <laughs> I'm going to wear it right away. I'm letting as everybody possible. know. <laughs> as I soon understand. as possible. I understand yeah, but, but the moral of the story is, mm -hmm. you know, God finds the fit. Yes. And sometimes we're trying to get into places and spaces, ministries in the body of Christ, Joe, for which we don't fit. Yeah, that we is true. We don't fit. And God is saying, no, this is not the fit I have for you. I have the right fit for you. And there's nothing like allowing the Holy Spirit to decide where you fit and to fit you into where he knows best for you to fit well apparently for your mother god bless her because that shirt fit that boy so yes that was his fit <laughs> that was time. his fit <laughs> that was his fit although you infuriated but i understand <laughs> i understand i do understand that well pastor thank you it's always a pleasure thank you so much um i just want to once again congratulations to our, our pastor forbes who's now installed Amen. And, and this wonderful yes, that so excited about her ministry. Yes. Amen. Now she's part of the trilogy. Amen. Uh, and, and plantation. So, Pastor, God bless you and your family. And until we meet again, thank lead you, us out with a word of prayer. Yeah, sure. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this podcast. Be with Dawn and her family. And uh continue to use Joe and this podcast. Dawn to share your word. We pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that you, through the agency of your Holy Spirit, will continue to make that call. And make that they will respond by the agency and through the agency of your Holy Spirit, to respond positively to the call. And those of us who have accepted the call, help us, Lord, to discover where we fit in your plan, in your cause. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And Pastor, so you will re re accept the AKA uh, Pastor Plan <laughs> with the white I accept sneakers? It. I accept okay, it. Okay, no. just want to make sure because you have to yeah. let Cassandra know you are fashionable every day. God bless you, my brother. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>